Black Friday has come early this year and we're ripping up our prices for a limited time only. Get the heaviest hitting deal of the year. Save up to 33% on all plans and stack up your fight calendar with over 150 fights a year. Live on The Zone. What a fight we have here in our main event. And then enjoy a knockout November schedule. Subscribe before November 29th. Sign up at thezone.com forward slash boxing. So some news that broke today was that Lawrence Coley has now signed a promotional deal with Frank Warren. Man, he's been through the he's been through promoters. So Lawrence Coley is now officially going to be campaigning a heavyweight after picking up the WBC because they're the only ones who actually have a division at this weight. The WBC Bridger Weight title. He's now gone to heavyweight. Right. Now Lawrence Coley. I know a lot of people don't like Lawrence Coley, and I think a lot of it has to stem from his acrimonious split from Eddie Hearn and his fighting style, which is not the most entertaining. I think people probably could get over the style, but the Eddie Hearn split left a lot of bad taste in people's mouths, if you remember. And you gotta remember, most boxing fans will nine times out of ten favor the fighter if they want to leave a promoter if there's any issues or anything like that and the way Lawrence Cody handled the whole situation with Eddie Hearn I mean he didn't do himself any favors and I think it, it would be one thing for a fighter to have beef with a promoter where like I'll give you an example Bob Arum has said even when Terence Crawford was with Bob Arum he said some disparaging things about Terence Crawford I think words to the effect of the amount of houses he could buy for the money he's lost on Terence Crawford and paraphrase, but worse to that effect. But, you know, make a reference to the fact that Crawford wasn't a big draw when he was with Top Rank. And that was when Crawford was legit actually with Top Rank. So if Crawford, who was maybe, you know, a fight or two away from finishing with Top Rank or had left Top Rank and maybe said some disparaging things back, you know, maybe said Bob Arum is this or that, you could understand that right, you said it about me the two wrongs don't make a right but you get what i mean you would say okay they didn't have the greatest relationship i'm sure bob didn't help him when he maybe could have and, and you you'd get that fair enough right but with eddie hearn and lawrence acoli eddie hearn really pushed lawrence acoli along from the get-go from the offset of his pro career and bear in mind he was with 258 management i mean he literally did everything he had him headlining at the o2 don't even think he was pro a year against Isaac Chamberlain. That fight was an absolute stink fest. That was the real first, that was the real start of things. He stuck by Lawrence Coley after that. A lot of promoters wouldn't do that. And then he put him in there. Well, obviously he rebuilt him over the course of the year, put him in there at Matty Askin in September of that year. And that was on AJ's undercard against Pavekin at Wembley Stadium at that. I think he fought on a few of AJ's undercards. Actually, he definitely has. Put him in there against Manny Askin, and that was even worse. I mean, it was so bad. I remember them interviewing Eddie Hearn at ringside prior, like before the fight was even over, and he was saying, yeah, I'm not happy with what I'm seeing. Many people felt, myself included, that Akoli should have been disqualified for that performance. His stock really took a hit after that, and again, a promoter, more cutthroat promoter, like maybe Bob Arum or potentially Frank Warren, they might look at that and say, I'm never gonna get this guy into a star he's having to hold and stink the place out even on these big shows i'm gonna feed him to someone he'll take care of him and then we'll see what happens eddie hearn didn't do that he kept working with him he persisted with him a performances did improve he goes gets him on a couple more of aj's shows gets him a crack at a world title wins the world title gets him a rolex does so much keeps him on aj's undercards as well tries to headline him in the o2 against Seslak in 2022 tried to do it on a sunday eddie hearn was talking about doing more shows on a sunday well that that, that how'd that go eddie and i'm not knocking the concept but you know i i like the concept of shows on a sunday but boy was that fight a stinker that was a return to form for a collie and that was that that was the end of him with matchroom now as far as i'm concerned eddie hearn went above and beyond for a fighter who was never going to draw and eddie hearn said it himself he had to reduce some of the purses he would have been paying Lawrence Coley moving forward because of that reason Coley just wasn't drawing money he then goes to boxer where apparently Ben Shalom said he will be the face of boxing on sky right <laughs> I mean if you thought Tyson Fury was the king of gaslighting Ben Shalom welcome to the party that's what I got to say on that one now I'm, I'm wondering that Frank Warren say, "Well, you won't be the king of, you won't be the face of boxing on TNT. It's just a case of, well, look, I'm not the other two. 
And Frank Warren is in the strongest position, certainly in the UK, of the other two. So it's actually quite a good, it's quite a smart move from Lawrence Jacoby, to be fair. But he goes to Boxer and yikes is all I got to say. The David Light fight was horrific, horrific, un- just awful. I mean, it's the, that was the worst out of them all. And then he goes in there with Billum Smith, loses that fight. And that was an awful performance as well. And that was it. He was out of the ring for about a year. Makes his return. Um, I always forget the guy's name. Rosanski in Poland. At that, he didn't even fight him in the UK. He had to fight him in Poland. And now he's with Frank Warren. Fighting a heavyweight, though. Now, I've always said about Lawrence Acoli, a cruiserweight. I'm not going to say he's not a talented fighter. There is an element that he's definitely got some good attributes there. Physical strength, reach, punch, and power. But a cruiserweight, he was so much bigger than these guys. He was so much stronger that he was able to beat these guys with his size, punch, and power. And he was able to shut them down as soon as they got up close. And I always said it, going back even to when he was fighting a cruiserweight, when he was a champion. I said, as soon as he steps up the heavyweight, he's going to get lifted off the ground. Because he is never going to be able to impose himself like that on some of these bigger guys. Could you imagine Daniel Dubois? Zile Zhang, you know, even some of the kind of, say, I don't want to say short heavyweights, but like imagine a prime Chizor or Jarrell Miller. Could you imagine him trying to do that? He'd get absolutely ragdolled. Be ragdolled by them. And I've always felt, or I've always thought in any way, and I think I might be on the ball with this, that a Coley's punch resistance is not amazing because you go back to his amateur days, especially when he fought Erislandi Savon. He fought Erislandi Savon in 2017 in the Rio Olympics and he was dropped multiple times in that fight. He was also knocked out in a round by Savon prior to that. And this was at, this was in the amateurs when he was a lot younger and he was fighting a heavyweight, which is cruiserweight as a pro. Now, obviously in the amateurs, you fight at the weight you walk around at. So you're not going to be cutting weight to get down to, it's 201 pounds, I believe, in the amateur, or at least it was. It might have changed, it might have increased or decreased, I don't know. But I know back the time when he was competing, it was 201 pounds was the weight limit. So he obviously wasn't cutting that much, like, you, the same day weigh in. So you could really use the excuse that, oh, he was drained. As an amateur, no. And I've always felt that when you see him as a pro, he's so anxious when people get close because I'd say not just the amateur fight, he's probably been ironed out in the gym a few times. I said, you amplify that at heavyweight where they're stronger, they're more physically stronger, they hit much harder. I said, he's, he, he will beat some of the guys, but if you were to say to me, you know, Joe Parker, he might have a little bit of success with Joe Parker. Zile Zhang, Bacoli, Dubois, Caballel, People like that, if I didn't already mention Bacoli, I'll mention him now, Bacoli. People like that, they will go through Lawrence Acoli at heavyweight. Maybe even someone like a Joe Joyce, who is as slow as molasses and is easy to hit. The physical strength and punching power of Joe Joyce might actually bring him into that fight. Would give him a good chance in that fight if he was aggressive. If he was, because Acoli would never be able to ragdoll. Never in a million years could he ragdoll Joe Joyce. Could hurt Joe Joyce probably. But never able to ragdoll him. Hergovic, you know, there's another one. These guys are big, big units. And I don't know, like, I wonder what way Frank Warren is going to promote him. Is he going to have him on some of these Riyadh shows? Is he going to be more a UK-based fighter, you know, kind of bit of boat like Nick Ball or someone like that? What way is he going to do it? Because at heavyweight, I think they're going to, need to be careful with a Cody. I don't see him having anywhere near as much success. I mean, I'd be surprised. I would put it like this. If... Lawrence O'Connor wins a version of a heavyweight title, I will be very surprised. And I mean that, I will be very surprised. And it's not just the guys who are in the top 10 now. You look at the up-and-comers, the Atelmas of the world, the even the Richard Torreses. You look at the Yalabeks, or Yalalov, Yalabek, <laughs> the middleweight, not fighting the heavyweight, Yalalov. You look at those guys and you think, yeah, I wouldn't. Certainly, Atelma, people like that in a few years, yeah, you got problems there. So... Yeah, I, interesting move by Frank Warren, certainly. Stable is ever growing. And the, the thing you need to remember as well, from a business move as well, I mean, there you go, there's a, a fighter perfect. You know, you could have like Nick Ball headlining or Cody headlining, Nick Ball on the undercard, do it in London, do it in Birmingham, Magnificent Seven. There's a lot of, there's a lot of good things Frank Warren can do with these UK shows in the pipeline. That's why I think Frank Warren shows have been much better than Eddie Hearn shows this year. Certainly the UK shows. It's, it's no comparison between the two promoters. The UK scene that Frank Warren has been doing or the UK shows he's putting on, they've been infinitely more 
superior than Eddie Hearn. With Eddie Hearn, you might have one good fight, which be maybe the main event. With Frank Warren, you'll see some of these Magnificent Seven shows. You're seeing the fourth fight down. You're like, that's a fight I remember. You know, so Frank Warren is doing all the right work here. All the right work. But just the a Coley as a heavyweight, I don't think that's going to... I could be wrong, but I don't think it's going to go particularly well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on this in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Peace.